For a small nation, the Netherlands has an oversized impact on global agriculture, with a rich history of innovation and productivity. But what factors led to their agricultural prowess? Join us as we explore the historical roots of Dutch farming, the secrets behind their success, and the lessons that we can take from their story. Welcome to the Seeker's Edge, where we seek knowledge that'll give you an edge in life. To truly understand the origins of Dutch agricultural innovation, we need to travel back in time to the early 1800s. During this period, Dutch farmers were already demonstrating impressive productivity, feeding more people than their German and French counterparts. In fact, a Dutch farmer could feed three people on average, while German and French farmers could only manage to feed two. But what factors contributed to this remarkable achievement? Uh, the first key factor was the adoption of advanced technology. As early as the High Middle Ages, around 11, 12th, and 13th centuries, the Dutch were employing those heavy, horse-drawn plows. This was an like, absolute game-changer for the Northern European farmers. This sturdy metal tool allowed them to work the fertile but dense soil in their region, unlocking untapped potential for increased crop yields. Before the introduction of the heavy, horse-drawn plow, farmers struggled to cultivate these lands effectively, eliminating their ability to support growing populations. By embracing this innovative technology, Dutch farmers were able to boost productivity, provide food for more people, and fuel the growth of cities. This early adoption of advanced agricultural technology set the stage for the Netherlands to long-standing tradition of innovation in farming. Now let's turn our attention to the Netherlands' unique location and the vital role of waterways in the pre-industrial era. As a river delta by the sea, the Netherlands enjoyed a strategic position that facilitated trade and the exchange of goods, with their western border on the North Sea and their rivers connecting them to the hinterland. One way the Dutch harnessed their geographical advantages is through the creation of waterways. In order to drain the low-lying grasslands and make them suitable for agriculture, the Dutch built an intricate network of canals and water management systems. These waterways not only helped to control water levels, but also served as efficient transportation routes for moving goods and people. As a result of this waterway infrastructure, the Netherlands became a hub for dairy production. With abundant grasslands ideal for raising livestock, Dutch farmers began to focus on milk, butter, and cheese production. The waterways enabled them to easily transport their products to nearby cities and beyond, further strengthening the Dutch dairy industry. This agricultural boom also led to the rise of an agricultural working class in the Netherlands. The success of dairy production attracted laborers, both local and migrant, who were drawn to the steady employment opportunities offered by Dutch farms. This influx of labor allowed farmers to increase production and take on more risks, which in turn spurred further innovation and growth in the agricultural sector. This is why Dutch agriculture has been heavily focused on livestock, particularly dairy farming. This specialization in livestock production was a natural outcome of the country's geography and landscape, with much of its arable land better suited for grasslands and other crops. Dairy farming proved to be a lucrative choice, as the Dutch were able to export a significant portion of their production, such as milk, butter, and cheese. The success of the Dutch dairy export market enabled farmers to generate substantial income, which they used to import cereals from the Baltic states. This exchange of goods not only supported the growth of the Dutch agricultural sector, but also fostered strong trade relationships with other countries in the region. By strategically leveraging their agricultural strengths and establishing trade partnerships, the Dutch were able to maximize the benefits of their unique location and resources. Another essential aspect of the Dutch trade network was the important feed for their livestock. As the demand for dairy products increased and the industry scaled up, the need for animal feed grew proportionally. See, the Netherlands' advantageous position by sea allowed them to import feed in large quantities, fueling the expansion of their animal husbandry systems. This ability to import feed helped Dutch farmers maintain their competitive edge in the global dairy market. These are all reasons for the immense growth of the Dutch agricultural sector. The Netherlands' strong economy and its position as a trade hub led to the accumulation of capital in urban areas, especially in port cities. This capital was often invested back into the agricultural sector, allowing Dutch farmers to expand their operations and adopt more advanced farming methods. Low interest rates, a reflection on the Netherlands' solid economy, further facilitated this growth by making it easier for farmers to obtain loans and invest in their businesses. As Dutch agriculture transitioned towards a more capitalist system, the need for increased productivity and efficiency became paramount. This led to a strong emphasis on 
knowledge sharing, and skill building within the farming community. Farmers recognize the importance of learning from one another and staying up to date with the latest advancements in agricultural technology and practices. This collaborative spirit resulted in the creation of a robust knowledge network that fostered continuous improvement and innovation in Dutch agriculture. Furthermore, the capitalist system drove Dutch farmers to intensify production and maximize their profits and cover the costs of as risks associated with their investments. This push for higher yields necessitated the development of new technologies. Technologies and strategies to increase output while maintaining or improving the quality of their products. In essence, the shift to a capitalist agricultural system in the Netherlands was fueled by the availability of urban capital and favorable economic conditions. These factors, combined with a strong emphasis on knowledge sharing and skill building, allowed Dutch farmers to expand their operations and achieve remarkable levels of productivity. Which brings us to the fossil revolution and industrialization era. In the 19th century, the Netherlands, like the rest of the world, underwent major industrialization. For this agricultural sector, it was mainly led by the fossil revolution. The fossil revolution, characterized by the widespread adoption of coal and later oil as resources of energy and materials, brought about significant changes in the global economy. This shift had profound effects on Dutch agriculture, which until then had relied on a bio-based economy, where organic materials such as plants and animals were the primary sources of energy, raw materials, and products. One major consequence of this transition was the shift from farm-based processing to industrial factories. As technology advanced and fossil fuels became more readily available, it became more efficient to process raw ag agricultural materials like milk and sugar beets and matter in centralized factories. This change in processing fundamentally altered the role of Dutch farmers, who were no longer responsible for producing the end products that they had traditionally made and sold. Instead, they became commodity producers, supplying raw materials to industrial processors. This shift also had implications for the balance of power within the agricultural sector. As processing facilities grew larger and more efficient, they began to exert greater control over Dutch farmers, who found themselves increasingly dependent on these industrial giants. The move to factory-based processing also contributed to the decline of small-scale, localized farming systems, as farmers were pressured to focus on producing high volumes of raw materials to meet the demands of the rapidly growing processing industry. As the power of the farmers have dwindled since the 19th century, recent times have presented even greater challenges. Over the past few years, Dutch farmers have faced increasing pressure from the government to comply with more complex and costly environmental regulations. European environmental laws demand standards that many farmers find difficult to meet, leading to a state of permanent conflict between the government and the agricultural sector. The battle between farmers and government started in 2019, the day when the Dutch government announced their plans to tackle the nitrogen crisis. The Dutch nitrogen crisis is an environmental and political issue that emerged in the Netherlands in recent years. It revolves around the high levels of nitrogen emissions produced in the country, primarily from the agricultural sector. In response to the government's proposals, farmers staged large-scale protests throughout the Netherlands. Angry farmers have protested across the country. Concerned about the future of their sector, farmers have blockaded infrastructure, dumped manure, rubbish, and asbestos on highways, and denounced their discontent outside politicians' homes. At the heart of this issue lies the fact that Dutch farmers are struggling to cover their costs and repay investments due to poor incomes. Many have made significant investments in buildings and equipment, only to find out that there are new laws that render these assets illegal, further exacerbating their financial woes. We've created a video talking about this uh, political issue in depth, and you can find it on the channel, and we'll leave a link in the description. Wow, wow, convenient. As we look to the future of Dutch agriculture, it's really important to consider the historical lessons that have shaped the industry and apply them to address the current crisis. By revisiting the past, we can gain valuable insights into potential solutions and develop a more sustainable vision for Dutch agribusiness. One approach to addressing the current crisis involves reevaluating the historical strength of Dutch agriculture and exploring new models that build upon these foundations. For example, the potential for food short circuits, localized systems of production and distribution that connect farmers directly with consumers could provide a more sustainable and economically viable alternative to the current globalized food system. By reducing the distance between producers and consumers, short food circuits can help reduce environmental impact, improve food quality, and support local economies. 
Another potential solution lies in the development of new cooperative models that empower Dutch farmers within the global agribusiness landscape. By revisiting the principles of cooperation and collective action that once characterized the Dutch agricultural sector, farmers may be able to regain some of the lost influence and bargaining power within the industry. This could involve forming new cooperatives, establishing direct relationships with processors and retailers, or leveraging digital technology to create innovative platforms for collaboration and exchange. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, please subscribe to The Seeker's Edge. Until next time.